In this video I'm going to uh, talk about uh, using NURBS curves. These are the basic uh, objects, the general objects that we use in fluid designer for 3D printing to quickly and easily create uh, finished objects. Um, so if I go to uh, fluid designer, um, basically it's running under Blender 2.79 and above and uh, you need to install the application template which you can download for free from our website. Once you've actually done that um, you should have some libraries, object libraries. So we're in the objects uh, folder here, and uh, you click on object libraries. So what I'm going to do is to uh, show you some uh, objects that are NURBS curves essentially, which we refer to as parametric smart objects. And so if I go to uh, Harrington fonts, so if I just uh, select letter A, okay, and uh, just place it on the screen like that, and then go to object library again. And I'm just going to use letter B. It doesn't really matter which the object is. Essentially, what you can do is to just place them in any position you want. Now, our grid size, our default grid size is 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. So this is the size of, a, of an earring or a pendant, something like that. But we can scale it up. Now, the beauty about working with uh, these objects, these parametric smart objects, which are essentially just NURBS curves, is if I go to view and uh, front view, um, all the objects that we've created have got a default size of one millimeter by two millimeters. So that's one by two, that's one by two. So they'll, objects will all line up on the bottom here. So uh, they'll be nice and flat if you print them on an FDM printer. And uh, what you can do is once you've, uh, oops, hang on, let me just switch smart screens on, uh, tabs on. Um, what you can do is if you just hold down the shift key and highlight the two objects, if you just uh, go to tools, object tools and join, you've now got the two objects joined together as one. So they'll move around like that. Now it's a good idea when you do this to go to tools, object tools and set the origin to the geometry of the shape. So the origin has just moved to here and also to snap it to the center. So go to tools, cursor tools and snap to the cursor so that's just reposition the center of gravity of these two joined objects now at the center of the screen. Now as I say these are actually NURBS curves so if I go into edit mode that's what they look like and uh, you can click on one of the controls there and you can reposition just a part of the object and that's something that you need to do sometimes and uh, I'll show you why in a second. Now, in the object library, many, many, many of these objects, not all, but many of these objects are these parametric smart objects. So all of these could be combined with A and B just by clicking on them and dragging them and placing them on the workspace in the appropriate position. Now, as I say, the default size of this is one millimeter by two millimeter. That's this bevel object here. If you want to set that to a different value, then if you go to the object library, if you go to the very first one, 3D templates, cross sections, bevel objects, there are some special bevel objects which are just for bracelets and rings. I'm just going to stick to this uh, cross section rectangular one. And uh, if I, for, for what I'm doing here, and if I just click on that and place it in the middle of the screen, that object is one millimeter by one millimeter, that are the di dimensions of it. So we've got a couple of objects on the screen now. We've got this Harrington font, which is actually the A and the B, and we've got this bevel object. Now, if I select Harrington font and change the bevel object over here to cross-section rectangular bevel object, the shape should change to one millimeter by one millimeter because that's what the object is. It's one millimeter by one millimeter. Now, the beauty about working with parametric smart objects is I can change the Y dimension here any value that I want and I can change the X value as well. Now notice when I change the X value things start to look a little bit weird. Now let me just open up the screen there. But if I resize this object, now it's very important when you resize these objects that you go into edit mode. Oops, I've got the wrong object selected. I want to select the A and the B. So if you highlight all the control points with A on the keyboard and if you do S for scale, notice what happens when you scale it up. It takes on the cross-section that's defined by the bevel object. Now the uh, bevel object is uh, this one here. So at the moment the bevel object is 2. So you can see. And the, and the Y value is 8. So 
So if I set that at one millimeter by, let's say, four millimeters, that's actually the shape of the, the, the thickness of this. So it's one millimeter there and two millimeters deep. Now notice when you do this, uh, if I go to view and top view, just move that back. Notice that there's no overlap down here. So if you try and 3D print this, there'll be a gap here. So something you need, to, and also this ring at the top here at the in the A uh, will fall out if you 3D printed this. So what you need to do here is to highlight the A and the B again and go into edit mode. And if you just click on the uh, control points at the bottom there and just drag them down with the Z and I'll just switch off snap. Just drag them down until they overlap and you could perhaps do it at the top here as well so just drag it up until you've got some overlap at the top there and very important this one over here just drag a couple of control points up so you've got an overlap if you don't do that when you 3d print it these parts will fall apart um, now if this was going to be a pendant or something, the size of this at the moment is much too big. It's 85 millimeters, so I would scale it down again. So go into edit mode and uh, select all the control points and you can scale it right down. And as long as you're in edit mode, then those cross sections uh, that we've set over here at one by four will be OK. Now you might want to change it down to something like two millimeters and if you really wanted to reduce the weight you could go down to something like 0.8 millimeters as the thickness and what you can guarantee is if you upload that to somewhere like Shapeways that will definitely 3D print and you'll know the exact dimensions of this uh, shape. Now if you wanted uh, to put a, a ring around the outside there and uh, what you could do is you could go to add curve and a NURB circle so that's placed a NURB circle of one millimeter in the center. We need to make that bigger. So I'm just dragging over here on the left panel and uh, just get the ring just to the outside of it. Now, if provided we highlight the ring first and hold down the shift key and click on the A and B last, when we join these together, the ring on the outside will take on the same cross section dimensions as the A and the B. So that could be a pendant now as long as we just put a little ring at the top uh, to put the chain through. Okay, so that's one way of uh, joining objects together very simply and one way of setting the bevel object that you can control yourself. There is another way of setting this bevel object if you actually go to groups and go to the group library. Um, there are some bevel objects there, there are some below one millimeters and uh, some which are bigger so if I just select the bigger one so if I select cross-section rectangular bevel objects from here and select that and click on the screen now notice it places an extra object on the screen but if I select that object and just X and delete it so that's just a kind of dummy object what I've got now what I've done effectively is create this list so in the groups folder there are lists of um, bevel objects and so you can change the uh, size the cross of these objects just by using this drop down list in the bevel object panel here so I've got this list from the groups library the groups library so if you just want to control it totally yourself you can do it from the objects library if you want a list you can do it from the groups library okay so that's how easy it is to uh, join objects together and uh, to change the thickness of them. Now an important th thing to understand about this is that these are still curves at the moment and uh, to 3D print them they've got to be in, in mesh format but the way that Blender works is that when you export this as either a OBJ uh, where is it export when you export as OBJ or STL it will convert the curves into um, meshes so you don't need to worry about doing that that's something that uh, blender will take care of for you okay so that's uh, a little bit about uh, working with nerves curve